What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers with another episode of the Planet Survival Guide and this one's going to be focused on our first mining vessel, the first vessel that's going to really help us ramp up our production and generally scale everything up and make life a bit easier for ourselves because mining by hand is actually not too bad as far as the mining bit is concerned but it's the lugging the ore back and forwards with whatever inventory size you've got on that's the real difficulty. So ironically, we're going to begin this episode with a bit of mining by hand. We actually need some cobalt in order to build a couple of the bits that are going to make our lives easier in future. In particular, we need some metal grids and they use cobalt. So I've used my GPS markers that we put down in episode 3 to work out where the cobalt is in the area. And in my case, it's the same place as my nickel and my iron. So I've headed back up there and I'm going to mine something like 10,000, maybe 15,000 cobalt ore to bring back to the base so that we can fund everything we need to make ourselves this first mining craft. So we're now back from picking up some cobalt and I admit I didn't fill up the inventory with this. We're not going to need a huge amount but we need some. So I've got about as you can see 12.9k and I'm going to immediately drop that into the refinery and get the cobalt going and at the same time we managed to pick up some nickel. I happened to go through some nickel when we were going down so I'm going to drop that in as well. You'll notice that uh, where's the main cargo container? We've still got quite a bit of steel and nickel in here, steel, iron and nickel in here, so I'm also going to put the iron in. We're going to run low on that relatively quickly. You can see the assembler's already running quite low. The last thing we really want to do, and that's do this quickly now, is to queue up a whole bunch of motors, because we are going to use no end of these things. So we want a whole bunch of motors producing, and then we want probably some metal grids and some large steel tubes. But you'll notice again, this hasn't started. This is because the assembler's off. Now when we turn it on, it'll go to one kilowatt. However, we can fix this by removing the motors and adding them back in again. For whatever reason, that kind of sorts things out and means that this is now jumped up to the correct input. The other thing we want to do is just check. So at the moment, you can see we've got some of our batteries are on charge. I don't really want that for the time being. So make sure they are all as they should be. We've got plenty of battery life left. These ones in here are also at the moment being used to power the base, which is fine and everything is going just great there so it's time to pop round and we're now going to go and build ourselves a vehicle so it's time to make mining easier basically it's that that episode finally has come so I'm gonna to need to get some components to build this stuff with firstly and I've left some of those actually in this buggy I pick up all of these uh, missing some interior plate from that list I noticed so probably going to need to make some interior plate as well. We're at the point where we're running very low on general resources. So let's grab some interior plate just so we can build, but this is all sort of chugging away. What we probably want to queue up in here is maybe a hundred more uh, of the construction components and maybe 50 interior plate. Let it get going on with those. We are going to come back at some point once the cobalt's processed a bit better we can move some of that up now just so that we get the you can see now we can build these metal grids but we are going to want to come back and queue up some more of that because they use yeah we don't have enough cobalt to make everything we're going to need but we are going to queue up 20 of those as well and then we're going to leave all of that running and go around outside and build ourselves another platform like we've done before in order to stick a ship on so grab myself no not the new small ship new station somewhere flat to build things and don't need this one to be particularly big, not as big as the last one, because what we're building is not going to be as big as the last thing we built. And as usual, just a little ramp to get up on top of it. So much like last time, the plan is I'm going to build a sort of frame and then I'm going to weld it up in time lapse so you guys don't have to watch that. And I'll talk a bit about what I'm doing as I'm going as far as what we're trying to build. So the idea is obviously we want a mining craft. So first up, we're going to need a decent amount of cargo, and it's important when we place this first cargo container that we have that little door, so you can see it there, pointing towards us. We're going to need access to that a bit later down the line. And while we're at it, let's grab out some of the things we're going to need from this control panel. So we're going to want small atmospheric thrusters, we're going to want large atmospheric thrusters, we're going to want an antenna, we're going to want an ore detector. Where is it gone? Ore detector, we're going to want gyroscopes. Obviously, we've got the cargo containers on our bars. We're going to need a conveyor network to move everything around. So let's get those on the bars as is. And we're going to want a remote control. And then we'll probably... Oh, actually, we've already got camera on the bar. Camera's going to be useful as well. But for the time being, that's all we need. And we're going to start off. We're going to whack one of these conveyors on there. We're going to get some batteries. Because obviously, this is going to be battery-powered like our other vehicles. But the important part with these batteries is we're not going to weld these up until last. 
Because as soon as you weld these things up, the whole ship turns on. Which is fine, but it means it also starts using your power up. The free power you get with the battery starts being depleted the second you activate it. So we're not going to weld those up yet. We're just going to continue building our frame. We're going to put a remote control, making sure we get it the right way around. So with the triangle pointing towards the front, just there. And then on the front of that, we're going to whack a camera. So we've got a nice point of view to see from. Now, on the side of here, you can just about imagine we've got some conveyor ports. So those are going to hook up quite nicely to the one thing we didn't get out, which is our drills. So if we stick those on those batteries, but this way around, so you can see there's a port on the side there. That's also going to line up with the side port on there as well. So we can have a couple of drills, and you start getting a vague idea of what this is going to look like when we're done. Uh, we are going to want to put a few thrusters on top here, but we're only going to put one on for the time being, because these ones underneath... If I put that there, I'm not going to be able to weld the bits above it. So for the, we're going to sort of come back and do that one in a second and just continue our way around the craft. So one of the most important things with your miners is remembering that a lot of the time you're pointing straight at the ground. So in fact, the thrusters that are counting as your downward thrusters are these ones, the ones that are pointing forwards, not the ones you would expect. And so it's really important to remember to have a decent amount of thrust pointing forward. So you see there we're going to have a total of eight of these small thrusters, and that's going to be enough for this ship, but only just. And then we're going to continue around. So on the back of here, you can imagine we've got another one of those small connectors. So we're going to make use of this one as well by plonking down a little conveyor block there. And then on top of this, we're going to start leading a pipe network out round to the right. So only need a few of these for the time being, but eventually it's going to come out to this sort of place. I'm just going to leave that like it is for the time being, and we're going to move on, and we're going to get one massive atmospheric thruster right in the middle. And what this is going to mean is basically it's going to be nicely balanced when it comes to flying around. So you can imagine we're going to put another one of these cargo containers on the back, but we're going to spin this one a little bit. So what we want with this one is for the small doors to be on the side and the big door to be on the top. So that's the right way around there. Just check it's all lined up correctly, and let's give ourselves a ramp to get on and off as well. So we're getting really close to being done. We're going to eventually have a connector on the top there, but we can't get at that for the time, time being. So until such point as we can, we're going to continue with sort of our thruster layout at the back here. So let's have one like that, one like that, and one like that. And I'm leaving this gap for a reason. This is not just aesthetic, although, I mean, I do think it looks better with them slightly offset like this. But there is more purpose to it than that. We're also going to put some side ones on just here. So, and same around this side, and again, we're leaving this top gap for a reason. We could put them tucked right in there, but we want to put something in that space. So we're just going to finish off those two thrusters there, and then finally, we're going to want a tiny bit of downwards thrust. This is, again, just in case, if you would imagine this vehicle pointing at the ground, what is downward thrust for us at the moment is going to suddenly become kind of side-to-side -side thrust. So we are going to need some there. Technically, for sort of your atmospheric vehicles, you don't need downwards thrusters. You can just turn off the bottom thruster and let gravity pull you. But I find this is a much, much more reliable way. And with miners in particular, it's very easy to forget these and then find yourself drifting when you didn't expect to. So we're getting pretty close. We've got loads of thrusters. We've got, obviously, our cargo networks almost laid out. The last thing we need to do, you can see there, I've got a hole that we can now hook up to in the side here. In fact, I think I've built the thruster over it. But the oh, yes, I have. So let's move this further back. But the idea is we're going to hook up to this hole in the side just there. The one that we made sure was on the side. And these are going to come out this sort of direction, curve up a little bit. And we might as well finish this now just so we get an idea of the overall layout, where we can and can't put blocks. And that's going to connect the whole sort of conveyor system up around this atmospheric thruster. So we can now add this one onto the back, and we can quite easily just stick it on the outside there if we wanted to. It's going to be a little bit non-symmetrical if we do so, but that's kind of fine. The other thing we could do, and I think I'll do this with this one in fact, let's just get rid of this completely. So I managed to get rid of more than I intended, but in reality, this is sort of almost the one thrust that can be as weak as you like, because this, the only thing this thrust is ever going to do is push you into the ground or push you forwards. And, you know, forwards... You can take your time accelerating. You're not in a massive hurry in a mining vessel. But what you are most certainly not in is you don't want to have too much thrust on the back because what that's going to mean is you keep slamming your drills into whatever you're trying to mine. So we've got most of the bits and bobs we need. We need to put that thruster on the bottom. We've got a couple of 
kind of useful bits that we want to add onto the ship just to make our life a bit easier for ourselves. So first things first, we have this little gap in here and we're going to stick on one side an antenna and on the other side an ore detector. And we do have the parts for these already, so that makes things a bit easier. But at the same time, that antenna is going to mean that hopefully we don't lose the vessel and the ore detector is going to make our life much, much easier in the long run. The final thing, we've got some gyros and we need a place to sit. So let's tuck ourselves under here and we can just about, if you get it in the right place, there's a gap there. So we want to put one gyro in this gap on the bottom there and there is going to be one more gyro on the top, but we're not going to be able to really get at it at the moment because that's going to be on the side of, you can see another corresponding gap just there. So we're going to put that up, but we're going to struggle to weld that at the moment. And then finally, we need a place to sit. So again, I'm going to do the whole passenger seat thing rather than having a full cockpit on this. It seems to be a nice way of going about it. And we're just going to sit it on the side, kind of lopsided. It's nicely tucked within the vessel. And to help us do that, we're going to need to put a block there. And this is what this gap was for. A block there. And then we will be able to drop a seat into this gap and actually hook off the back. So there we go. That's our seat in position, and we're pretty much ready to weld this thing up. The only thing I'm going to do as I'm welding, because I'm going to switch over to time-lapse now, is make sure that I remember to put this thruster down here back in again. So it needs to be this way around, just there. But we're going to go and do a whole bunch of welding. The other thing I'm going to need to do with this, as I've mentioned, is build some more parts. So we probably don't have the motors we need yet to make everything on there. Just that large atmospheric thruster on its own you can see is 144 motors so we're going to use a huge amount of motors for this so it's worth coming in here when you go to collect your first load of parts and just make sure what do we got at the moment we've got 200 motors so from this we're probably going to need maybe another 150 motors probably another 15 large steel tubes and probably another 20 metal grids and how are we doing for construction components probably about another 100 construction components. So what we can quite happily do now is just go in there and queue this all up now. So 20 metal grids, we're gonna have about 150 more motors. We're gonna need maybe 15, maybe 20 more pipes and 100 more construction components. Now it's gone to not enough power, that's not true. It's because we've run out of cobalt ingots. So if we go down to the refinery, wherever it's gone, it just hasn't moved these up. So if we want to, we can now go on and turn this conveyor system set up on. And what this will mean is that when we add stuff like this in, you see that's now updated. It's dragged the cobalt it needs into the assembler. I'd still recommend not turning it on for the refinery though. Leave the refinery completely under your control. So while we weld this up, I need to talk about a couple of areas in which your experiences might vary a little bit to what you see in these tutorials and that's in specifically relation to world settings. Now firstly, I'm using inventory times 10, welding times five, uh, grinding speed times five, you know, everything's up on maximum, and that's to make things nice and quick for the sake of the tutorial. I don't wanna have everything take a long time. Now firstly, this is no longer quite so important as it used to be. The upgraded tools, you know, the upgraded welder and grinder and so on that they've put in recently means that you can achieve some very, very fast welding and grinding speeds without needing to have the world settings so high. So that's worth taking into account, but there's one really important area in which this is going to have a big impact, and that's the inventory size setting. So in my world, I have 10 times inventory size, and what this means is that when I put something inside one of my cargo containers, and this only applies to cargo, it will weigh one-tenth as much as it should. So another way of looking at this is on one times inventory sizes, if you put 100 kilograms of stone into a box, it weighs 100 kilograms. But if I'm on 10 times inventory size, that same 100 kilograms in the same box will only weigh 10 kilograms when it comes to how much the thrusters have to lift. So it's really worth taking into account in particular with today's miner, that this thing is capable of working all right in five times inventory size as well. I have not tested it with a full cargo in one times and I would imagine it probably can't hold itself up. So you're gonna to need to keep in mind, if you're using one times inventory sizes, try and really be careful of how much you load things up because you'll probably see things in this tutorial that you won't understand how I can do them and how you can't.
So the back end of the thing is mostly welded up, but as I mentioned, there are a few bits that we were missing that we needed to finish off this thing and make it work properly. And part of it's connected to the fact that we haven't built our batteries yet. So we are missing some power cells for those, but we don't have any power cells. And more importantly, we don't have the silicon we need to get our hands on them. So for this, and I'll also mention I was about, about 150 motors short as well. So yeah, maybe make it uh, more like 500 motors. As I said, you do end up needing a lot of those, but they are really easy to make. They're nickel, they're iron, they're not a hard component to come up with. But anyway, what we need to do now is get our hands on some silicon. We have this huge stack of bulletproof glass that is perfect for the task. So we're going to stick that all in the assembler, switch to dissembling mode up here, and we're just going to add a hundred of that in. And as you can see, this is making us loads of silicon wafers. Each bulletproof glass is worth five. So we can leave that running, it's only going to do 100, and what that's going to do is give us enough materials to build the power cells we need for those batteries. And power cells are going to start becoming a really important part of what we're doing in general, because we are pretty low on battery power and pretty low on power overall. If we go over to the control panel, you'll see you know, things are actually starting to deplete now. You know, we are getting towards the point where things are going to run out eventually. And especially if we keep running stuff like the refinery, for example, and we do want to get through all that ore, so it's time to start thinking in those directions. So now that's all been dissembled, we can go back to assembly and you'll be able to see, where is it, power cells here. It says we haven't got any nickel, that's a lie, we have plenty and we're going to need 40 of these. So you can see as soon as we've done that, it's actually pulled the nickel it needs into here. So we have plenty and it's sort of pulling it in a bit at a time. It's kind of annoying the way it does that instead of just telling you, yeah, you've got plenty of nickel, don't worry about it. So if we drag that up manually ourselves, as soon as we go back here, you'll see, yeah, that's gone clear and we've got loads. So we're just going to build those up and those are pretty much the last bit we need. So while that happens, I'll just check that I've got a decent amount in my inventory and we'll go and do, in fact, let's grab some of those power cells now. Hopefully 20 are done. You need 20 per battery. Let's grab some now and go back outside and add the other couple of bits that we are missing from this because we are missing... Well, first of all, I didn't have quite enough motors to finish welding up that bottom one there, the one I said don't forget. But as you can see, we haven't done the batteries yet, and we're missing our connector on the back, uh, we're missing some lights, and there's some bits under here that we kind of can't get at, especially as one of them there, the antenna, we also don't have the parts we need for it on us. That needs radio communication components, so we're going to need to make those as well. But for the, for the time being, what we're going to do is we're just going to weld up one of these batteries. And as soon as we do, you can see the ship now has turned on, which means that we can get away with removing the landing foot. So the landing foot's now gone. It's hovering under its own power. If we get in here, you'll see we're going to, we haven't got that much power. You know, we're not going to be able to hover here indefinitely. But if we go into our remote control, we can lift ourselves enough off the ground and it will settle down into position. Weirdly, as soon as it hits 0 meters a second, the fuel time, you'll notice, goes way up. Uh, I think that's actually a little workaround in SE at the moment for some of their issues. But anyway, we can now get under here and, for example, weld up this ore detector. We did have the detector components from the one we disassembled on the bottom of the lander, of course. We can weld up one of our two gyros. The other we're going to have to lower the ship in order to get at. And then we can add the final important part. So you notice I've removed the landing gear there. That's because it sticks out, and it sticks out in a way that we don't really want. Whereas if we were to come along here and get this, we can stick it on the side here. We need to put a little thing for it to sit on, but we can stick a landing gear on the side here. We are only going to have one in a kind of lopsided, opposite the passenger seat sort of way. But that is a perfect height now to not interfere too much with the sort of line of the vessel but at the same time mean that we can lock this down in place and stop it from needing power as it's working. So let's jump in here and again grab our remote control. You can see we've now got a bit of gyro force as well, which is cool. And we're going to bring ourselves down to the point ever so gently where we can lock ourselves in place. There we go. So P for our landing gear. We're locked. And then like with the main base, we're going to make ourselves a flight group. So we're going to grab the large atmospheric thrusters, both gyroscopes, even though one isn't complete, and all of the small atmospheric, in fact, let's do shift on these. Large, both gyroscopes. Call it flight, and that's just so we can turn things off to save power really, really easily. So we can now whack that off. But the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show it on the HUD. Now we don't have an antenna on here at the moment, but it's gonna become relevant shortly. So let's come out. The next thing we wanna do is add that connector on the top. So if we do a sort of running jump up here, we can get a look at the top of this. 
being a little bit creative with how we move around. And on top of here, we can whack a connector. And this is gonna line up nicely with the one we've got on the back. So this, you can imagine this is gonna sit in place very much like what we've got over there and enable us to unload this, but also recharge it. So we can whack that on the back. Hopefully I've got the parts for it on me. Perfect. The other thing we can do from up here is get at this gyroscope. So we can finish building that. We've got a little bit of con conveyor there that I wasn't able to get at from the ground. Now, in fact, thinking about it, we've got one in the middle there that I haven't welded up. So we're gonna have to remove that gyro on the bottom temporarily, a small mistake. I forgot that that's buried deep in there and it actually needs welding early on. Uh, and the final thing we're gonna add, so you can see where you're going when you're underground or if it's night is spotlight there and you can see that kind of lines up with the height of the thruster so it's not going to get in the way and the height of the connector on the back so yeah final thing i might as well correct that little mistake i made right now so again remote control unblock us uh, i forgot to turn the flight group on there so we just fell down to the ground but that's no real issue i can just put that on the bars turn it on we can pick ourselves up a little bit and now i can get underneath in order to fix that little mistake. So the one I'm talking about is behind this gyro here. You take this down, you will see that there is a single connector conveyor. I've managed to remove it as well because it wasn't built. Yeah, we had one of these just there and we need to keep that there because otherwise none of our cargo system is gonna work. Uh, and you can see there, our detector is built, but our antenna is not. So let's re-add that gyro on the bottom. It do isn't really needed, this gyro, to start off with. When you're empty, this will feel very, almost over maneuverable. As you fill up with ore, it's going to make a lot more sense. So we've done that. The last thing I'll need to do, obviously, is go and grab that radio communication component that we're missing. So let's go and grab that along with the remaining power cells, and our little ship is pretty much done. There's one final little tweak we're going to make to it that's going to make our life more efficient in the long run. So those power cells should pretty much be done. Slightly concerned that we only have 18, given I know it takes 20 each. So let's go and quickly make two more. Brilliant. And let's also grab, so don't have that radio communication component, but as you can see, it's silicon and iron for those, so we can make a single radio communication component, and that's all we need for our antenna. Uh, don't need the bulletproof glass. That's fine, thanks. <laughs> So everything we've needed out of there, let's run back downstairs. And then from underneath we can do our antenna. Oh, is it needing four? Whoops. Not that that makes any difference. I don't know why I thought it needed one. Oh yeah, it's because the small ore detector needs a single detector component. And when, whereas the big one obviously needs like 30 whereas these apparently scale slightly differently. Finish up the antenna there, and also finish up our second battery, and this will give us another chunk of juice. And we are all set. Maybe give it a paint job, but aside from that, we are all good. Now, we wanna do it here, and you can see we have a whole bunch of these things, and they're all labeled backward, forward, etc. And what we wanna do is find all of the ones in here that are backwards. Now this can be a bit of a pain because the name's too long. But you'll get an idea as you go through up the top here, you can see backward, backward, backward. So the backwards ones, obviously we built these first pretty much, except for the very last one, which is also backwards. So we're gonna get all of these, so it goes down that far. So we're gonna select all of those and that one I built last at the end. And we're gonna make this, and we're gonna call this something like dampers, because that's basically what we're doing with this. So one of the biggest, annoyances for me at least when it comes to doing stuff on planets and we can now obviously go and turn all of these thrusters off show on HUD so it's a bit less painful we can also go in here where is it was it the flight let's show that off HUD we can also now go and turn our antenna off but it's also a good idea I suppose to jump in can remote control and actually fill out the bar so we can do this really easily so we're going to want antenna on and off we're going to want ore detector on and off those are the two extra power using things that you might not necessarily want all the time. We've got our flight group there already. The other thing we're now gonna to wanna to do is get that group we've just made. So this dampers group, and we're gonna put this on nine, and that's gonna be on off as well. And the reason for this, oh, of course we need our drills. So let's grab our drills out. And the reason for this is, it used to be a case in space that you would fly off like this, and then you turn your dampers off, 
in order to sort of kind of coast. But you can't do that anymore because if you do that, you'll fall to the ground. So the idea here, let's whack that antenna off. The idea here is instead of turning your uh, dampers off, you turn off your forward facing thrusters. So if I hit nine now and then let go, you'll see we kind of maintain our velocity. We'd maintain it even better if I was level. But we maintain our speed because we've turned off the thrusters that are going to slow us down. Now, if we were actually sort of level like that, you'd see we literally would maintain speed. And then any time we want, we can turn those back on again and slow down. But it saves a lot of battery power. You can see our fuel time is three minutes when we've got all those on. But if we turn our front thrusters off, we can get a bit of extra juice. So it's just a way of making especially long journeys a lot easier for yourself. But as you can see, we're kind of all set up. It works nicely. It is capable of standing on its head, which is important. You know, you've got to remember this is the angle you're going to be mining at sometimes. And you're going to need to be able to sort of do that. But the last thing we're going to do just quickly is go over and talk a tiny bit about how best to mine because I've not really talked a huge amount about that before and it's going to be a lot easier to see with this vehicle than it is to see normally. So we're going to come over here and obviously we've got a bunch of holes that I've already dug from when I was mining previously so if we uh, turn the UI off you'll start to get an idea. Slow us down a little bit. Apparently they don't appear until you get close enough. So there they are, you can just see them popping into view now. There's a hole just down beneath me, there's another one up there, and they've got different ores in them. Now at the moment, the ore that we're probably going to need the most of next is actually iron. So I'm going to go and find my iron hole, which I believe to be this one here. So I've had to cut footage because unfortunately there's a bit of a bug at the moment with Space Engineers where apparently if you build a ship but then don't uh, reload the game before you drive it, the right and left click, click for the uh, drills doesn't work. I'm not sure why that is. The other thing I've noticed in the reloading is for some reason one of the batteries is on recharge. So make sure that's not happened to you as well, otherwise you'll run out of power really quite quickly. Now I just want to talk, we're really low on power so I need to go and charge this. I took it straight out before doing any charging on it, which is not what I'd recommend you guys do. Go and put it in for a charge first. But I'm just quickly going to demonstrate how best to make use of, say, mining on a surface like this. Because we know at the top, near the surface, there's very little that we're interested in. So what we're going to do is just come up to the hole that we made earlier. This might as well start here. And instead of holding left click, if we hold right click, it removes large portions of the material at once without picking it up. Now for us, that's perfect because we know that Nothing at this surface level is stuff that we need. It's all ice and rock and other non-interesting things. And you can see how we can make really quick progress down doing this. And the same is true with the hand drill. Until we get to something we want like that, and then we can dig away. Now, I'm not going to dig away. I'm going to go and charge back up again and do the digging off camera because we're getting woefully low on power. But it gives you a pretty good idea, so just to make sure that we do make it back and save power, I'm going to point ourselves in vaguely the right direction, and then I'm going to turn the front thrusters off so that we can accelerate and then glide a fair bit. So we've got a fair bit of speed up, now I can glide. I can even lean us downwards slightly to drop our altitude and speed us up. You've got to be a little bit careful doing that. And then obviously as we get in near our target, we can whack those front thrusters on to slow us down. And you'll notice we've got a bit of a power overload here. That's because one of our two batteries doesn't have any power in it at the moment. So just being very careful that we don't do any of this too quickly because that's liable to run your batteries down just as bad or even worse. If you get an overload when you're going downhill, like when you're dropping towards the ground, sometimes you won't stop yourself in time and that can be really quite painful. But anyway, let's get down to floor level lock ourselves on the foot and go and move that other vehicle so we can charge. So there we go. P, turn our flight off, turn everything off that's going to use power. Now we've got fuel time of four hours so we can safely leave this thing here for a bit. I did notice that I've gone on this side, one, two, and on this side, they're at the bottom instead, but hey. I don't think that matters too much. Let's finish welding that up. You guys get the idea. So everything's back at base. I'm going to go and stick that on charge and then get some mining done. And then next episode, we're going to talk a bit about power because power is very much our next problem. The base has started using loads. So we come up here, you'll see our batteries are, well, running super duper low. So 
We're going to finish up just by making sure that the assembler is off. Let's go and turn the refinery off for the time being. Give it a chance to charge everything back up again so you can see these things are all here. Still outputting a little bit, so let's go and get everything set to recharge. And what this will do is mean that when our solar panels do have power, you can see there they're all actually providing power now, we can get something from them. So finishing up there, next episode we're going to talk a lot more about power and how currently batteries and so on in the game do not work quite like you expect and how best to utilize them. So I hope you found this one interesting, guys. If you did, please hit like, please hit subscribe. It does really help me in the channel out. And if you didn't, let me know down in the comments what I can do to improve. So thanks a lot, guys, and I will catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.